Off the west coast of Wales is one of the UK's largest bays. Beneath the waves is a hidden world, a complex ecosystem teeming with life. A number of cetaceans can be found in the waters of Cardigan Bay, such as the harbour porpoise. Some species of dolphin also reside in the area, including the bottlenose dolphin, and occasionally whales are spotted further out to sea. As well as those who inhabit the waters, there are many species who benefit from its plentiful supply of food and resources. Thousands of birds live along the bay's coast, with many areas being important breeding sites. Between March and July, large colonies of guillemots cover the cliffs. Kittiwakes, herring gulls and razorbills are also among those who choose the cliffs of Cardigan Bay to raise their young. As well as seabirds, buzzards and many other birds of prey can often be seen on the rocky ledges or wheeling gracefully overhead. Cardigan Bay's many rocky beaches are a perfect spot for a whole variety of birds. From the common sandpiper and black-headed gull to the oyster catcher with its distinctive orange bill and black and white feathers. Many cormorants have made Cardigan Bay their home and they can be seen fishing in its waters or drying off on a nearby rock. To protect Cardigan Bay's diverse marine life, two special areas of conservation, or SACs, have been assigned under the EC Habitats Directive. In the north of the bay is Penclina Sanai, and the Cardigan Bay SAC covers around a thousand kilometres squared in the south between Aberarth and Keibua Bay. The primary reason for the creation of the southerly SAC was due to the presence of the bottlenose dolphin. In addition, the SAC has many other important features, such as around 48 reef biotopes. Rocky reefs consist of stable boulders and cobbles, and are a perfect environment for a huge array of animal and plant communities. Cardigan Bay SAC legislation also works to protect subtidal sandbanks. They support a huge variety of species and are important to the wider structural integrity of surrounding habitats. Sea caves too play an important role within the Cardigan Bay special area of conservation. They are numerous along the coast and are home to many species. During the pupping season, the Atlantic Grey Seal is one such animal who utilises the protection the caves provide. More than 60 pups a year are estimated to be born in the area. However, it is one species that is the primary reason for the creation of the Cardigan Bay SAC, the bottlenose dolphin. There are over 200 bottlenose dolphins in Cardigan Bay, and these can grow up to four meters in length, some of the largest in the world. An incredibly intelligent species, the bottlenose dolphin is inquisitive and playful, they are often seen breaching from the water and are known to bow ride and take an interest in human activities. Bottlenose dolphins can sometimes live until around 50. Calves stay with their mother until around the age of four, mimicking her moves until they have learnt to survive by themselves. The Sea Watch Foundation has a project which monitors the bottlenose dolphins in the bay as well as other cetaceans. The cetacea order comprises of the marine mammals, whales, dolphins and porpoises. From the late 1980s, interest focused on Cardigan Bay because of its resident population, or what was thought to be resident population, of bottlenose dolphins. And there were only two that were identified in the British Isles at the time, that one and the one in the Moray Firth. There have been perhaps the most important developments in terms of potential threats to uh, bottlenose dolphins have been boating activities. There's been a lot more um, recreational activities than there used to be. Uh, your speed boats, power boats, uh, jet skis and so on. There are other potential issues as well. On the whole, fishing hasn't been a major problem, but scallop dredging could be a threat because if certain areas are 
dredged on a repeated basis it will alter the habitat, modify it to the extent that it could affect uh, substrates and therefore the uh, uh, life feeding on it which were uh, taken by bottlenose dolphins. And that's why the regulations that are in place at the moment are so important. Other threats have been that uh, oil and gas companies have been interested in, in exploration and uh, there's been seismic activities and the sound disturbance from seismic could potentially affect the dolphins but at the moment that's been prohibited from occurring in these regions um, so fortunately that's not yet a, a real threat. And then finally with the great development that's taking place around the UK in terms of renewable energy uh, both wind power and wave and tide energy uh, governments are looking at sites close to the coast in shallow waters to use for these developments and those inevitably are going to then come into uh, uh, potential conflict with bottlenose dolphins. So it, we need to keep a, a, a watch eye on, on what happens there and uh, see that they're not going to have a too big a negative effect. Newquay is a picturesque little town on the coast of Cardigan Bay. It has become popular with tourists hoping to spot a bottlenose dolphin foraging for fish or leaping from the water. The Sea Watch Foundation have a project based in Newquay due to it being an excellent location from which to study the dolphins. Sea Watch is a marine mammal research charity working to improve the conservation of whales and dolphins in the seas around the UK. They aim to involve the public in scientific monitoring to educate and raise awareness and understanding of the threats faced by marine mammals. Among its many achievements, the research studies conducted by Sea Watch help lead to the formation of the special areas of conservation in Cardigan Bay. Newquay is a quite important area for the bottom of dolphins in particular within Cardigan Bay, Newquay Harbour, and we wanted to find out why it's important for the animals. We've set up these land watches to monitor how they're using the area and also how they're reacting to boats and if this is affecting them long term. These are done by Sea Watch volunteers. They scan the whole harbour area um, for any animal activity. They record their sightings um, so we can find out where they're using the area, where in the harbour, what they're doing at the time, and if there's any boat encounters, what the boats are doing, and how the animals are reacting to the boats. The data um, is all inputted into a database. It will then be analysed. We've been doing this for many years now, so we can compare this between years and between months within a season, uh, and see if there's any changes over the years. If we can say that the dolphins are using Sarah for feeding or they're using it for resting or something like that, as long as we know um, why the area is important and how the boats are affecting the animals, we can, we can implement measures to make sure that this area continues to be important for them in the future. As well as conducting land watch surveys, the Sea Watch Foundation have other ways of monitoring the bottlenose dolphins in the area. Studies of many cetacean species took a great leap forward since the 1970s when photo identification techniques were introduced. Here in Cardigan Bay, we use the photo ID method as a non-invasive way to study the Cardigan Bay bottlenose dolphins. We actually take photos of the fins of the dolphins, which in time obtain curves and nicks and notches, sometimes from social interactions, sometimes from fighting sometimes from injuries, unfortunately. When we take the photos of these fins, we then try to match them to our own catalogue, which contains all of the population and all of the marked animals that are here in Cardigan Bay. It is a non-invasive technique, so there's actually uh, minimal harm and minimal disturbance to the animals while doing it. When we take photo ID pictures, we do it through various platforms. The first is our land-based platform. Our volunteers sit on the pier wall and this is a very good way to learn how the dolphins are using the actual bay. So it is a very restricted and small area, but the dolphins do come in quite often. The next platform that we use is the tourist boats in Yuki, so the Airmo 5 and the Airmo 6. These are one and two hour boat trips and Winston is very generous to let our volunteers join these boat trips. When they do encounter dolphins, our volunteers try and take photos of the dolphins. When the volunteers join the boat trips, they also do some public awareness on board, so they teach the tourists about the dolphins and talk a little bit about the area and about the dolphin population in Cardigan Bay. 
instance, there is a very strict code of conduct which prevents boats to disturb the animals. Um, the dolphins don't always come near enough to the boat. Since we are a research community, we are provided by the Countryside Council for Wales uh, with a photo ID license, which enables us to approach the dolphins in order to collect our valuable data. Our dedicated surveys take place upon the Dunbar Castle too, and that is our dedicated research boat. When we go on these surveys, we go when the sea is very flat, as this is a time where it's quite easy to spot the dolphins even if they are far away. When we identify a group of dolphins, we approach them very slowly and we try to take photos of all the dolphins and all the fins in the group. We also try to estimate the total number of dolphins within the group. We try to estimate the group formation, so how many adult juveniles and calves are around. Sometimes there are even newborns. We try to estimate if they're females or males. We try to estimate the general behavior of the group as well. Through photo ID studies, we can learn many things. We can learn about site fidelity, so where the dolphins are going. We can learn about their life history. We can learn about population trends. We can learn about uh, where the dolphins are migrating to. For instance, in past years, we thought that the Bono's dolphins of Cardinia Bay were a closed population and are actually only here in Cardinia Bay. But since 2007, when we started doing uh, surveys up in Anglesey, North Wales, we realized that many of the dolphins that we see here in Cardinia Bay are also seen up in Anglesey. In later years, we also realized that some of the dolphins have even been identified in the Isle of Man, so that's way up north in the Irish Sea. When coming back from a survey, we go back to the office and we download all the photos from the camera onto the computer. We have a very strict protocol on how we deal with the photos. So these photos should be cropped in a certain way and then matched to the catalog that we have in the office. The volunteers and the staff follow this protocol as we try to have all the data collected and all the analysis done very consistently. Our photo ID catalog contains photos from the late 80s I can happily say that some of the dolphins and some of the fins that have been seen then are still seen today. Bottlenose dolphins have a highly adaptable diet, feeding on a wide variety of fish and invertebrate. The bottlenose dolphin can hold its breath for up to six minutes and are often found in shallow waters. This is one of the reasons they favour the waters of Cardigan Bay, since the bay itself is less than 60 metres deep. Food is a primary factor in bottlenose dolphin movement and site fidelity. It has been found that areas of strong tidal currents near headlands and estuaries are particularly favoured spots, one of the reasons the waters surrounding Newquay are a popular haunt. Bottlenose dolphins have a complex social structure. Some members of the population interact with very few others, while some have been found to interact with a large number of dolphins, playing an important role in social organisation. To best utilise the food sources, often they are seen foraging in twos and threes. The bottlenose dolphin is a truly exceptional animal, and all must be done to ensure it stays in our seas. <laughs>